folks today. We're going to take a look at this tank. Uh, this is a tank that I've kind of kit bashed out of a couple of different other things. And we're going to talk a little bit about that, about the setup for this. And today we're actually going to plant it. I'm going to skip the how to build one of these. I'm going to make that for maybe the next video. And this is going to go straight into planting and setting up. I decided to do it that way because some people, some people really like the kit part of this. Some people might have in their mind they'll never build something like this, but maybe they're interested to see what the outcome is. Obviously, because I haven't really finished setting this up, I've only uh, I've got it prepped. It's all ready to plant and, uh, and go ahead and put it into place, but I don't know what it's going to be like to operate it over a period of time, and I, I don't yet know uh, what planting it will look like. So... I've got an idea in my head of what I think this will turn out like, and hopefully, hopefully over time, uh, it becomes what I what I'm shooting for. But isn't that the case with every aquarium project? This particular aquarium was really popular. Uh, it was a really popular upload earlier in the year. It was one of those kind of spur of the moment things. When I saw it, it was half price. This is normally like sixty something dollars. Uh, I got it for about thirty something dollars. At 30 something dollars, it's not a bad deal. It's kind of a rimless tank with a cool plastic uh, cover. Uh, I say cool, but a plastic cover. <laughs> of course, it does have this divider, so it's sort of meant to keep two, uh, two bettas together. Although, or uh, maybe your betta away from some other fish or other inhabitant that you might have in your tank. It's got this sort of water flow feature that, that falls over. The minute I saw this tank, I had this in mind, this is a, I knew exactly what I wanted to do with it from the moment I saw it, kind of utilizing this bridge to sort of make uh, something that's similar to a, a little ledge uh, where I can get some of this, these Wabakusa bricks kind of up out of the water or kind of half in the water and half out, let the water wick up and then grow some plants on top of it in a nice little enclosure here. How these things fit together uh, was probably one of the more difficult parts of this build. I'll go over uh, a lot of the mechanics and stuff later, but this is just kind of ended up being the best scenario. Uh, there's like a million different ways to do this, most likely. I chose to keep the original lid and sort of augment that uh, somewhat, uh, more or less, so I could keep the light that's in here and, uh, and maybe a little feeding door and a little handy stuff like that. This one has been sealed up. Uh, to keep things from crawling out. I, I had a mind that I'd like to keep uh, maybe some crabs, some pom-pom crabs. I've tried to keep them in the past, and uh, the last time I tried to keep them, most of the knowledge seemed to indicate that there were uh, uh, fully aquatic creatures, but that's not the case. Uh, according to some folks, they do come up out of the water, and they might even need to come up out of the water. Uh, so what I want to do is maybe try again. With the pom-pom crabs, I'm going to offer them a lot of areas to kind of get up out of the water. Uh, this maybe wouldn't be ideal if something wanted to come up and say bur bur burrow in the sand or something like that. So if, if behavior like that is, if I start to notice like maybe that would be the case, then uh, I might switch to a different type of aquarium later on. But in the short term, it might be interesting uh, if they're mostly aquatic, there'll be plenty of places to get around. I've made it so that as something falls over here, there's a way to crawl back over to the other side. If they use claws and, claw, and crawl around, uh, if they're just fish, of course, I can isolate them on this side or this side. Uh, this side's uh, got both the lights for this thing. It had uh, This little hood came with two different lights, and I've attached them both under here. Uh, this side's lit from this pendant light. Uh, this thing I do want to change at some point. Uh, this isn't super sexy, but it's great for setups, I've discovered, uh, or for hanging a light over your setup. So uh, I've kind of got this as a stand-in until I think of something else. What I'm thinking is I might mount something directly to the wall where this ends up, but I kind of need to get it there before I measure and pick something else for that. So that might be in a future video, or it might be at the end of this one, depending on uh, how quickly I want to put this out. All right, so before I start really digging into this and, and planting it out, let me go over just a couple of features or, or things I've considered uh, as I built this thing. All right, so here we have the tank. Uh, this has a terrarium on top. Uh, this is a terrarium I got from Amazon. I have removed the bottom so that it goes all the way through, of course. Uh, you'll be able to remove this and then carefully remove the lid. Uh, as you see, this does go up above the lid. I've kind of made 
some allowances for that. I've made uh, little ledges and stuff, and that's actually what this sits on. Uh, there's a little bit of an air gap here that I'm hoping will keep this from fogging up too much. It'll give me a little bit, of course, a little bit more um, evaporation, but this should hold enough moisture up inside to kind of keep things uh, nice and moist the way I'd like. I've got some Wabi Kusa bricks going. These, I made these exactly the same way as I made the ones in the, the steampunk tank, and I'm excited to use those again. They're working really, really well upstairs. Got a handy little door here that I can use to uh, maybe get in there and mess around if I need to do something. As we get lower here, you'll see that I've made a shelf. And this shelf uh, will be able to hold these Wabikusa bricks. It's actually open underneath. You'll see this in the construction video, but the water can pass through here a little bit and, that, and the water line should get up to just above here. Uh, which will allow these bricks to start wicking the water. It'll, they'll absorb the water and bring it all the way up to the top. My shelf is sort of disguised with some foam that I've cut. It is pretty dark under here, but this is also where uh, the return will be for the pump. Okay, so as we look at the side of this aquarium, uh, you'll see that this is where the little waterfall feature is. And I've attached some foam under here. The hope is that this will sort of catch the water and bring it down to the uh, and bring it down uh, to the rest of the water level without creating as much splash, and maybe keep it nice and quiet in there. Uh, I've also made a little hide over here uh, to put the pump, and the pump is shoved into uh, a piece of porret foam that I've cut. I wanted to make sure that this pump was uh, accessible, so I could take it out and change it if I ever needed to, or even swap it out with maybe something else. Uh, it's got a nice long hose that runs up over here and then over to the other side as it runs through here and then it goes down to underneath here and it kind of comes out like that. There's a little bit of light in the front so I might put a few plants in here. Uh, I think that this light will be good enough to maybe grow some low light plants on that side so I'm just going to put that on a separate timer. I've got some buse that I ordered online uh, to fill in here, and I got a little bit from around my tanks. What I've been doing, especially with the steampunk tank, is taking buse that's not growing so well underwater or adapting so well underwater and kind of putting it in the margin there and letting it kind of grow back out. And uh, my buse has been really happy with that. It seems to really like it. Yeah, so that's the tank. This is, uh, I think this is only a five gallon tank, which is odd because the, the steampunk tank was also uh, approximately five gallons. I'm sure this takes up some of that space too, so uh, uh, it'd be safe to say that this will end up being probably a four and a half gallon tank. There is a small gap up here, and like I said, I made it so something could climb. So if something gets in here and it's got feet and it can climb, uh, you can climb from over there to over here. Uh, there's a tiny little gap that'll fit most, most of the little creatures that I would put in here. And that's about it. I think I'm ready to get some substrate going. Uh, I'm going to pull the camera in real close to show you every process as we plant this thing. And for the planting version, I'm going to remove this. As you can see underneath here, I've made a little platform. I'm not sure how useful this will be. I had it in my mind I could put moss on here, but I'm not sure how I like that interacting with the glass or the, you know, the metal that it, it interacts with. It will be a nice vent, and I'm interested to see if this stays uh, less foggy than the one upstairs does. My original design had these little gaps cut and stuff. Uh, I changed it to this so that, in theory at least, I could take this and move it back. Now, I'm, I'm sure once I have plants on here, it's going to be more like this. I was hoping I could maybe get in there with my hand if I needed to clean something up or maybe clean the glass a little bit. More than likely, I'm just going to be pulling the top off and then pulling the other top off and going with that. And that's how we're going to plant. Okay, I'm going to do the substrate in a similar way that I do my other ones. Now, although I'm not growing a lot of plants, uh, in the bottom here, I, I will be growing some. Actually, I might put quite a few in the bottom over here. What I like to do is a little bit of crushed coral on the very bottom here. I'm just going to kind of move this up. Distribute that a bit. And I'm going to do some red clay powder. This is very similar to the setup that I've done in just about 
oh, every tank I've done <laughs> in the past few years. This is my preferred method on the bottom. We are going to try something on the next tank using uh, ADA products again. I'm just going to kind of evenly distribute this stuff. Kind of get it everywhere. The next thing we're using is fluoride dark. And I have just rinsed up a bunch. That was my leftovers from the last project. That's all I had left. And, uh, but I've got some fresh fluoride dark. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in here. Because the Wabi Kusa balls contain so much um, soil substrate, aquarium soil substrate, I don't think I'll be including any more. I mean, that's actually, you know, that's a big brick there and those small ones. It's gonna be kind of a lot anyway, but it's all gonna be up here. Uh, I have a nice base down here though that plants can grow in is only gonna be useful. And even in my steampunk tank upstairs, even in that dark, dark area in that steampunk tank, I'm able to grow Anubias. So my last step in the substrate with this tank was to add onyx sand and uh, in the end, I really didn't like the color of it. I tried to mix it up with the uh, with the other Seachem stuff, but uh, I really didn't like it in the end. Uh, I ended up planting anyway and just trying to see if I, <laughs> if I could live with it. But in the end, I pulled out all the plants. You're going to see that that didn't matter a whole lot, but uh, I will end up changing the substrate on that one side of the tank, the uh, not the Wabi Kusa side, but that side I'm planting in right now. So I took all these plants down from another aquarium that I had going uh, in the same spot. And I was lucky enough that uh, all the plants were uh, attached to rocks and wood and stuff. So really planting this was just a matter of moving those rocks and wood back and forth. So there's a lot of Anubis, Nana Petite, and a few other different types of plants. Uh, I've got some dwarf sag that was in there too. The, all of these plants came directly out of the other tank. Uh, I think I've got some java fern that I added in too. There's another big plant I can never remember the name of that's in there and that's the bulk of that plant. Uh, oh, I wish I could remember the name. I'll throw it up when I, if I figure it out. I did some sparse planting on the other side too. Uh, just kind of adding a little bit of Anubias here and there and, uh, and other stuff. Is it, other stuff in the wet areas. So when it was time to fill this with water, that's when I noticed that that onyx sand was going to be like a kind of a problem for me. Look at the the milky whiteness of it. I, I guess you should you're supposed to rinse that stuff. I I haven't ever used it before, and regular sand I don't typically rinse, although maybe I should. And uh, yeah, I definitely learned my lesson with this stuff. I hated it. I decided to pull in close and do the Wabikusa Islands here. Uh, as you'll see on the side there, there's those those are uh, Wabikusa Pauls. Uh, if I made a, a video called Wabikusa Bricks or something like that, I think that's what it was called, and it kind of shows how I make all these things. I I don't know how much of that I'll cover in the DIY version of this video, but the uh, but the I had some Wabikusa balls left over from my last project, and I kind of shoved them on the side to give it, uh, you know just provide a couple of other places where where things could grow. Planting this, uh, mostly what I did was just kind of find little advantageous places to stick it. And you could take the bricks apart and, and like put some of the stems underneath, which is really handy. So a lot of it was just kind of uh, jamming stems in wherever I could. I, I did a fair amount at the right at the bottom, uh, where the right at the base of the water. So they'll, they'll come right up out of the water and start to grow up. And a few others that were a little bit more hardy uh, stuck on top that I felt like could survive it. But uh, I just covered the abuse as much as I could, added the lid, and added the top. That's the initial setup on day one. I gave the stuff inside of it some uh, much needed hydration. And I've been doing this a little bit every day just to kind of uh, help the plants get acclimated. And now here it is. Uh, I've removed the onyx sand at this point and sort of rescaped the other side of it. Basically, it's all the same things. I just kind of moved them around a little bit. And uh, I'm really happy with uh, the way this is looking so far. Hopefully it grows in like the other one and starts to look really nice. 
I look forward to seeing what happens. And folks, here we are, the finished product. Uh, this, this was a really interesting build. I feel like I learned a lot putting this together. Now the actual build video for this, like the how I made it, is gonna be in a different video. Time will tell. <laughs> As far as what where this one goes, I, I'm hoping based on the steampunk tank and the work that I've already done in a very similar aquarium, uh, because the, the functionality is is quite the same. It's this is really sort of the transparent version of the steampunk tank with a lot more plants. Uh, this has a lot more plants in the water areas uh, than that tank does. That one's uh, got a few plants in the water areas, although they've grown quite a lot. And, uh, and a lot of plants up top. This is both. So I've got a lot of plants down below here and a lot of plants up top. Uh, the plants up top, uh, what I've been doing so far is I've been spraying them down maybe once a day, uh, the buse that's up there. I think that, it's, that stuff's going to wick the water up and keep it nice and moist underneath. But I'm a little worried that it's not getting super humid in there. It's got a lot more area than this one does, and I think it's got uh, a lot more ventilation too, so maybe the humidity isn't necessarily carrying over. So just to kind of acclimate the plants to, uh, to the environment that they're in, I've been spraying them down about once a day, and that's typically what, uh, what you would do with a Wabikusa ball. I kind of made these because I wanted a low maintenance Wabikusa ball that you didn't have to hose down and spray all the time. But I think that'll get there eventually, and maybe I'll, I'll just need to be patient and, and make sure that the plants don't uh, dry out while I wait for them to sort of acclimate to the new environment that they're in. I discovered a lot of interesting things building this tank, and it's sort of prepared me for maybe bigger, more complicated builds. I've got a couple of ideas floating around now uh, based on the way I built this frame and stuff. I, that really, you could build a lot of really amazing different sort of paludariums and and, uh, and different things just by kind of incorporating a shelf uh, that you can kind of pull some of that substrate up off the ground and, and kind of get it up a little bit higher and make another plane to plant upon. Something interesting too, if you bought one of these tanks for its waterfall capabilities, uh, that waterfall, to, to see a waterfall, you're going to have to have the water on this side down real far. It has to be basically down to here or so before you see any of the Kind of the waterfall effect. And I noticed when I did water changes and stuff that I could get the water down to, down to about here and the pump was still carrying it over and it kind of made an interesting effect. Like this side almost became like a wetlands paludarium. And I think I could probably take loose gravel, pile it up in here and make sure that it's separate from uh, where the pump is um, and just let the water flow in here. But I think I would have to really watch evaporation and stuff though. I don't like... Uh, I don't ha like having to really watch for evaporation all the time and being super aware of that. So I'll probably just leave it filled up like it is now. But that's definitely an option. I do notice that if I, when I turn the pump off and I do a water change, the water will even out. So somewhere underneath here, the water is able to, to go from one side to the other. I, really, I didn't notice anything. I didn't notice any gaps or anything when I was making this. So I'm not sure exactly how that's happening. <laughs> But obviously I've missed something in here and there's, there is a way for the water to get over to the other side. I like trying new things and doing new stuff. That's part of what keeps the aquarium hobby interesting for me. And I hope you appreciate uh, when I bring you weird stuff like this to talk about. So I'm sure you're gonna wanna know what happens with this project. Will this tank ultimately fail or will it come together and be uh, an, an amazing project? The only way to know for sure is to subscribe and come back again. If you really like my content, ding that bell so you can come and see when I make new content. Otherwise, you might not see it. So in short, if you liked this video, be sure to hit the like button. Uh, I do have merch. Get your Sean riding a dragon shirt uh, on my Teespring store. There should be links right under this video. Until next time, follow your bliss, keep a clean tank, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.